Sorry. 911, my husband's having a heart attack. Put the heel of your hand in the center of his chest, right between the nipples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is he conscious? No, he's not. In America and around the world, coronary disease is the number one killer. I'm going to start getting him out and out. He's turning black. About a third of patients, the first to die is sudden death. And this is a completely preventable disease. All right, ladies and gentlemen, pretty frightening stuff. Uh, John Rumberger is uh, Dr. John Rumberger, cardiologist for over 35 years practicing, director of cardiac imaging at Princeton Longevity Center, contributor to what you just saw a part of a clip of the Widowmaker documentary. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you pleasure for coming Pleasure to see in. you, Steve. Thank uh, you for inviting me. Uh, my pleasure. Okay, so um, the Widowmaker talks about the business side of heart disease and the frightening part of uh, wanting to, you know, stay alive and, and not have a heart attack. Um, uh, yet, yet you're with the Princeton Longevity Center, and you, w I would imagine, urge people to to have these tests and exams. So explain to me. It seems like it's uh, they kind of a at, at loggerheads here. Well, I mean, the, the the issue is is that all of the information that you hear about in terms of heart attacks and blockages and stents and all that stuff is looking at late advanced heart disease which goes largely undetected and with no symptoms up until the night before your heart attack or the day before you decide that you can't walk your dog anymore. Which is why that little clip of it's preventable was very key, right? Right. So the key thing is is that early diagnosis is a far better way to determine. And what it does is it looks at you as an individual because all of the risk factors, cholesterol, smoking, and things like that are great statistics looking at uh, populations that everybody has a problem and they're very valuable but as an individual it's the culmination of those risk factors in you including your family and whatever that really makes you a unique individual and you really need to look at that person and then make a decision. So what, so what should the average person do uh, to prevent it at what age and what steps should the average average person take I mean I've heard it said that you should check your cholesterol starting at I don't know 30 every five years or ten years is that is that enough uh, you know it's okay cholesterol is only one, one of yeah. a number of important mm -hmm. risk factors but cholesterol by itself doesn't tell you if you're going to have heart disease it's like people smoking never smoked in their life Get getting lung, lung cancer, cancer and people yeah. with three packs a day you don't Never die. Yeah, all right, so what should the average person do? Well, I think that the important thing is is to appreciate that the general risk factors, the smoking and the family history in particular, are very important. And then somewhere around the age of 40 to 45 in men and somewhere around 50 to 55 in women, they ought to at least take a look at themselves as an individual, see if they're developing atherosclerotic plaque. If they are, we may have to do some alterations. And if they're not, then their risk really is quite low. And we're not going to particularly uh, put our resources or our expenses uh, towards them, yeah. uh, trying to prevent them when their risk remains, in, in fact, individual. Right, but you say see, see if they're developing plaque. That that could only be done, uh, not only, but that the way to do that is to get a, a, a CT scan, correct? Correct. It's a very, uh, well, probably one of the best ways to look at the early development of plaque. What happens is that hardening or calcification begins at a relatively early phase of the plaque development. Now, the calcification is actually a healing process, but the fact is, what is it healing? Yeah. And it ends up being the marker for the process. And the more extensive the healing, the more you have plaque. Widowmaker. That, of course, is a scary phrase, and it refers to one particular coronary artery. Right, the yeah. left main coronary artery. Yeah, and that's the one that could kill you in a hurry. That's the one that occupies about 60 to 70 percent of your heart. So if that gets blocked, it's kind of over. Uh, so where can fo uh, folks see the Widowmaker documentary? Uh, they can see it. Uh, it's featured in some uh, 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 houses, some, some, some places, but you can also download it Online, on iTunes yeah. and, and okay, uh, Amazon. Okay, iTunes and Amazon, the Widowmaker. And if uh, people want to uh, follow that up and uh, get themselves checked out at the Princeton Longevity Center, I'm sure you'd be happy to uh, accommodate We're them. We're happy to see them. Yeah, diet, stress, uh, family history, all that stuff that enters into it, yeah, correct? And all of those things. Well, good to see you, Doctor. Right. Thank Pleasure. you very much. Thank you very all much. All right, uh, don't forget, folks, the Widowmaker documentary. Nothing's more important. You know, the late Dr. Fred Benini, who was a good friend of mine, um, always said your health is in your own hands. 
if you're not proactive, uh, nobody's going to be proactive on your behalf when it comes to your health. So remember that. Up next, we'll be proactive with the daily closing bell report, green or red.